Hey guys, my name is Ellen and welcome back to the Exam Vision YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about how to achieve a H1 in maths in your Leaving Cert. We did make this video last year, but for all of the six years this year, I wanted to remake the video, reiterate the most important points and just teach you all how to get a H1 in maths. A little bit of backstory, in fifth year, I was failing maths. I was really considering dropping down to ordinary level. I was never getting more than 40 or 50% in an exam. And I really didn't know what was going on. I didn't understand. I was trying my best, but I was lost and I was failing. So up until probably the start of sixth year, I was failing maths. And then in my leaving cert, I worked really hard and I got a H1. I wanted to tell you that because I want to let you know I'm not naturally H1 student and everything. I didn't get 625. I was failing maths at the end of fifth year slash start of sixth year. And so I want to teach you my ways and how I achieved a H1 in maths. Now my leaving cert was 2021. So it was during COVID. I was the year who had predicted grades and the written exam. And then whatever grade you got the best in in each one, you got that grade in your leaving cert. And I do want to also point out that my teacher predicted me a H2 and I received my H1 in the written exam. So I got it all on my own. It wasn't my teacher's prediction. So I just want to tell you guys everything I know, all my tips and tricks and how to achieve that H1. And if you're really struggling right now, just some things to help you and try and move you up that grade ladder. Because I promise you I was in the exact same position. And it is definitely manageable. It might not be easy, but anybody can do it if you put enough time and effort into maths. So yeah, without further ado, let's get on with the video. The first thing I want to talk about is listening in class. Listening in class is so, so important. You do not have the time to DOS in class and then go home and teach yourself the material. Especially in maths, the material is very difficult. You cannot just go home and spend hours teaching yourself. You don't physically have the time to do that. So you need to be understanding the material during class. You need to be asking your teacher questions. You should not be leaving that class with any unanswered questions. Don't be embarrassed to ask questions. If you want to do well in your leaving cert, you gotta ask the questions. It's really not that deep. Everyone asks the same questions. They're just too scared to ask. So you need to be listening to your teacher, explain the topics. You need to be asking the questions that you have. You need to be using your class time to understand the topics and then coming home to actually learn the topics off and practice exam questions. You should not be teaching yourself anything at home. I was very lucky to have a great teacher for maths for my leaving cert. And some people are definitely not as lucky. And I think the teacher you have will definitely either help or not help your grade, if you know what I mean. If you are struggling and you don't have the best teacher ever, I would definitely recommend checking out the exam revision courses and bundles. Their maths course is absolutely amazing. And if you are struggling and your teacher is really not giving you what they should be, I would definitely check them out. They have H1 standard notes, they have quizzes, PowerPoints, video lessons. You could watch those video lessons five times over if you already don't understand the topic. They have all of the exam questions split up per topic and all of the answers and it's accessible all through one website. So I would definitely recommend checking them out. If your teacher is not the best, this could be your little online teacher. The next thing I want to talk about is trusting the process. The maths course is long and hefty. I know you feel like you're just doing random topics and moving on to the next thing. Like you could be moving from trigonometry to complex numbers and you have no idea what the tie is between the two of them or what the tie is between any topics. They all just feel very separate to themselves. I promise you when it gets to like end of March, April time, right before your leaving cert, all of these topics start to tie together. You start using a lot of topics to answer questions within other topics. You could be using differentiation within trigonometry. You could be using trigonometry within complex numbers. Not many people talk about this, but I really do think everything ties together in maths at the end. And this really helped me because it felt like I had a purpose for every topic. It gave me a new understanding for all of these topics because I could actually apply them within other topics in the course. I was noticing that I could use these topics within the other topics and it gave a whole new meaning to the maths course for me and really helped me understand why we were learning all of these topics. You might be doing a topic right now that you really don't understand. You don't understand what the application is and why you would ever use it. I promise it will all come together at the end, right before the leaving cert. It will all click. I think in every subject, eventually it will click for everybody once you put the time and effort into it. So don't panic yet if you're really struggling in certain topics. The next thing I wanna talk about is maths being repetitive. I think personally, a lot of people who don't truly understand maths will say that there's no repetition in the Leaving Cert Maths course and that's why it's so difficult, but they really couldn't be more wrong. 
Maths is just as repetitive as any other subject. And if you put the time and effort into it, you will see that. Every weekend I would give myself a topic, let's say trigonometry. And I would go through every single exam questions in the past 10 years on trigonometry, including mock questions. If you're using this method of studying, you will notice the repetition. All of the questions are very similar, the functions are just different, but you are using the same method to answer them. When you see that there is this repetition, it definitely relaxes you a little bit. You don't feel so all over the place. You don't feel like there are so many questions you could be asked because really per topic, there is only so many things they can ask you. And you will see that in those exam questions. If you're doing multiple years of exam questions, you will see how the same questions get asked every year. It's just a different function and so it scares people, but it's the exact same way of answering it like any other year. That's why you should be practicing so many exam questions. You should not be answering anything from the textbook unless your teacher obviously tells you to do it for homework. It's a waste of time. You should only be using exam questions as your form of study, really. Because the more exam questions you do, the more familiar you will be with the layout, how they ask the questions, what kind of questions come up, and you'll be so prepared then for the questions that come up on your leaving cert because they're gonna be similar enough, just different functions and numbers. How I went about doing exam questions, I would buy the physical exam papers. I would not use the online website. I preferred to have a physical book the big fat maths ones anyway. So when I was going through these exam papers to find, let's say, trigonometry questions for that weekend, I would do all of the questions out on a piece of paper and then I would check if I got them right. If I got them wrong, I would redo them again. If I got them right, I would copy that answer into the physical paper, the actual exam paper book. I wanted in a full exam paper that was completely full, all the questions answered, but all correct. People might ask why I did that, it was a waste of time because you know, you could just look up the answer, you could just go to the back of the book, but I just think that is such a big waste of time and that's not how you're going to learn. Yeah, the answer is at the back of the book. Yeah, you could look up the answer and see how they did it, but everyone's minds are different. Everyone thinks differently. So you should be looking at how you will answer the question. Most of the time I never understood how the book got that answer. I never understood how people were going about answering these questions if I looked up tutorials because I thought differently. And so only the way I answered it myself made sense to me. And so that's what would stick in my head and that's how I learned it and how I understood it. So what's the point in just copying it from somebody else? That's their brain. That's that how they answered it and how they analyzed the question. But everyone is going to be different. That's why it is so important to use your own answers. And when you're writing that correct answer into the actual physical exam book, you can be writing little notes where you got that from. You should be completely understanding the question. If you got it wrong, there's no point just writing in the correct answer. You need to give an explanation. So when you're going back in May, but right before you're leaving cert, you should be using this exam question book for all of your revision. And it is full of all of the correct answers in your own words. That is what is so important. The last thing I wanna talk about, which is kind of similar, if I came across a really difficult exam question that was really different, I've never seen it before, I will always write it on a sheet of paper. So let's say during the weekend, I'm doing my trigonometry questions. I would have a separate sheet that if I came across any weird questions, cause there's always gonna be a weird question in that topic that I was revising, I would write it on the sheet of paper. I would write the question and I would write how I answered it. Because how you answer those tricky questions, because there's always gonna be a weird question in your paper, really will determine if you're either the H1 student or the H2. It really differentiates between the two. So you need to keep on top of all of those really dodgy, weird questions because the likelihood of them coming up on your exam is high or something similar. So you can't just know all of the repetitive questions. If you're really aiming for that H1, you need to know all of the dodgy ones as well because every exam paper will have some kind of dodgy question. Whether if you're just looking to increase your grade, then ignoring them is probably fine. But if you're reaching for that H1, you need to be prepared for everything. Last thing I wanna to quickly touch on before I end this video, consistency. If you want a H1 in maths, you should be studying maths every single night, whether it's 10, 15, 20 minutes, every single night. The longer you leave that gap, the more you have to catch up on. You need to keep your brain actively thinking of maths every day. You should be practicing one or two exam questions every single day, just to keep your brain moving. Anyway, I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I gave you some insight into how to achieve that H1 in higher level maths. And I will talk to you all next week. Bye.